What is going on everybody? Welcome back for another review. Today we've got the 2019 Kia Sorento SXL all-wheel drive. New for 2019, we did have some exterior and some interior enhancements, and it's a three row for every single trim level. One thing that I've really noticed with this Sorento before we get started, is it's a very feature rich three row SUV. Small in size, full of features on the inside. Can't wait to show you to you. Let's get started. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in for this 2019 Kia Sorento SXL. So for 2019, we've got a refresh on the front and the back, a little bit of the features. Kia wanted to go for a more sophisticated look, and I think that they've done just that. It still looks kind of like the Sedona from the front, but it definitely does look a little bit more premium. So starting out with the headlights, our trim on the SX and the SXL, you can have these LED headlights with the cornering feature and the amber running light down below. And these headlights do a really good job at night. You can definitely see the lights move and they auto level and adjust when you turn the vehicle on, which is pretty cool. Otherwise, you'll have halogen headlights and just regular LED running lights. We also have these LED fog lights, those quad beams, which looks pretty cool on this SXL. You can have halogen fog lights on the EX and the SX. And then on the grill of the Kia, it will range from a matte black to a gloss black, all the way to this dark metallic that we have right here. This dark metallic is on the SX and the SXL. And this color that we have today is called Platinum Graphite. What do y'all think of the color? What do y'all think of the design? Leave your comments down below. Then as we get a little closer and take a look at these wheels, they'll range from 17 to 19 inches. And of course we've got 19s on this top trim and 235 width tires on all of those wheels. And you can even get red or black painted calipers on the SX or the SXL. And we do have the all wheel drive model right here. You can see the chrome trim pieces around the windows, on the bottom, even the door handles. And standard on every trim are the turn signals in the mirror, which is good to see. The SS, SX and SXL have the power folding and reverse tilt function on both mirrors. And those door handles will even be illuminated with the smart welcome feature on the EX and up. The Sorento gives us 7.3 inches of ground clearance, so not too bad for a crossover, especially with the all wheel drive that we have. We have LED combination tail lamps, an actual exposed exhaust tip down there, and uh, the smart power tailgate, which I will show you in a little bit. Now, when we go to talk about safety on the LX, you can get blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. You can get rear parking sonar optional on the LX, standard on the EX, and then front parking sonar optional on the EX, standard on the SX. Auto high beams will be optional on the SX, standard on the top trim, as well as the rain sensing windshield wipers. Radar cruise control is stop and go on the EX trim, and then on the EX, you will also get automatic braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with lane keeping assist, and the driver attention warning. Now on the EX trim, not even the top trim, you can get the smart tailgate like that. And it's actually power programmable so that you don't have to have it go all the way up. You can adjust where it actually stops. So that's pretty cool. There's no under the, under the lift gate type of swiping function with your foot. You just stand by the rear end as long as you have the key on you and it'll open up. Otherwise there's a button up there that you can push. You can close it with this button right here or you can do that from the inside or your key fob. So a lot of different ways you can do that. Let me give you a closer look. So taking a look at the back of the Sorento, there's that little button and a handle up there as you can see. And this is on the smaller side for sure. There's 11.3 cubic feet behind the third row, which is quite small. That's a carry-on suitcase. And I could get it to shut like that. Of course, you could flip it around another way. And if I take this out, we do have a little storage bin down there. We do have a spare tire in here as well, plus our jack kit right there. So that's always good. And these seats are definitely easy to get down. All you gotta do, lift that right out of the way and as you can see that is really nice and flat so once you've got both of those down you've got 38 cubic feet and we've actually got a couple uh tie downs one there one there one on each side a 12 volt power outlet as well so that's always good and in order to get the 73 total cubic feet that you can get you can pull this little handle and then well maybe there we go and the front seats do have to be forward quite a ways in order for them to actually go down but at least there is a nice little handle and you do get a nice flat load floor which is always welcome so overall not too bad from kia but definitely not quite as big as some of the competitors but you got to forgive it because it's smaller on the outside 
All right, for your key fob, Kia will give you the smart key with push button start on the EX trim and up. These feel plasticky, but the rest of the key fob feels pretty darn durable and a key can actually pull out. And like I said, with power folding mirrors, the blinker on them, this is the only button you need to know. You can push it to lock it, if the vehicle is running right now, or push it to unlock it and the mirrors will flash. Now that we've hopped inside the Sorento, we do have a soft material up here, semi-soft right here, soft armrest with a little bit of padding to it as well. All automatic up-down windows on our trim, memory seat settings, nice feeling door handle. Down below we do have a good size bottle holder as well, and when we go ahead and shut the door, a fairly solid sound. My only complaint is that when you go to open it, there's literally, it's almost like the door wasn't even shut, so it's just a little bit annoying pulling that and there's really no feedback to it whatsoever. But once we get inside the Sorento's interior and we move across, it's not a modern looking interior you could say but it's very practical and very simple very simple layout we even have soft materials up here on the dash um, some softer material around this console right there but very easy to use let's go ahead and start it up push button right there now starting with this steering wheel we do have the leather wrap steering wheel and it is heated these controls feel better than they did on the kia sportage that i was in you have all the basic controls cruise control controls for our seven inch display right there. Now using the buttons on the steering wheel we do have access to all the different important information for our trip computer. In fact that 23.7 miles per gallon is actually what I've been getting real time um, with some mixed driving. Mostly highway but definitely pretty impressive better than the um, EPA would suggest. And then of course you can scroll through other things you know you can see uh, different settings you can customize things so a nice seven inch display right here you can even turn off your blind spot or your lane keeping assist there and turn on your power outlet moving across to the dash we do have anywhere from a seven to an eight inch screen i do like the screens from kia here you do have actual physical shortcut buttons as well uh, very easy to use you do have apple carplay and android auto and we even have the upgraded harman kardon sound system which sounds okay not as good as i was expecting for this price range but it is probably better than the base system but very easy to use this screen um, is pretty responsive i've had no trouble with it whatsoever there's really a lot that you can do with it as well navigation is okay um, i have used it a little bit um, you know it's clear enough and you know it works good enough for me but i still use my phone navigation instead now moving down below, one complaint is that I think that just this little display right here looks kind of old, but other than that, this is very easy to use. You've got dual zone climate control in here, which is optional on the LX, in fact, and easy to use buttons. We do have all our seat controls right here for our ventilated, heated seats, heated steering wheel, all very easy to use. You even have three tier for each of those, and the ventilated seats do seem to work pretty well. Moving down a little lower, we do have a wireless charging pad, which is available on the SX trim, a USB port, auxiliary port, and then two 12 volt power outlets. And you can even cover that up if you want to. I do like this shifter. It feels pretty solid. In fact, let's go ahead and show off the backup camera. So we have a 360 camera as well, the around view monitor, which is optional on the SX and standard on this SXL. And as you can see, we do have dynamic lines. You can see what's in front of you, behind you. There's a whole bunch of different options you can do with that. And of course, a 360 camera. You can even turn that off or turn that on with this button right here if you're going lower speeds. Our center locking button here, electronic parking brake, brake hold button, parking sonar as well, which is nice to have. You can turn that off or on. And then our drive mode, we hit the drive mode button. And I do really like the way the drive modes are set up. We have comfort. We have Eco, we have Sport, and Smart. And I've actually left it in smart, smart almost the whole time. It will pretty much predict and keep you in whatever it thinks that you need. Uh, pretty good size bottle holder. They're not really adjustable per se, but I've had no trouble fitting anything in there. And then we even have a little storage bin right there. Plus, this armrest is pretty soft. It's not necessarily the most comfortable to have your arm, but uh, we open up, we have a separate storage bin there, another USB port. We can even take that out, so pretty good accommodating center console. We even have a locking glove box with a metal button right there. It's softly lined on the inside, Open up, opens up softly as well. That's always welcome. 
Now moving up, you can get a dimming mirror all the way down on the LX, but the EX will give you this home link right here. There's no frameless option, at least standard, but uh, it works well. Optional on the EX, you can get LED lights and you can get this big giant panoramic roof. And it goes way back there, just like the Kia Sportage. And for the glass, the glass opens up to that pillar right there. So you get a pretty big, awesome panoramic roof. And then to top things off, we've got our visor here and the entire visor will slide out. Got your vanity mirror and light. Now going to look at visibility, we do have blind spot monitoring in here. Give you guys a look back there, you know, about what you would expect for a three row crossover. Now the seats for the Sorento, there's a whole bunch of different variations. So the bottom three trims will give you stain resistant cloth. Once you get to the LX V6, you get 10 way power seats. The EX and the SX will give you leather seats while the SX will give you memory seats. My SX L trim will give you 14 way power, which includes two way thigh support so that thigh piece can extend four-way lumbar support, and we have Napa leather. These Napa leather seats are pretty comfortable. They've got some actually pretty good bolstering around the sides. The bottom even has a little bit of bolstering, and overall, they're pretty comfortable seats. They've kind of got a brown, a brownish color to them as well. Now, if you want heated seats, you can get those optional all the way down on the LX trim. If you want ventilated seats like we have here that seem to work pretty well, those are optional on the SX and standard on this SXL. And the good news for you passengers, those of you riding, you'll get 10-way power seats when we have the power seats over here. Now it's time to check out this back seat. And when you take a look at the Sorento from the outside, you might not expect this back seat to be this roomy, but at five foot nine, the seat is actually a pretty comfortable place to be. We've got mat pockets on both sides. As you can see, we've even got those air vents. And then we've got a couple USB ports, or a one USB port, one 12 volt power outlet, and an actual power outlet right here that you can turn off and on from up front. And if you take a look over here on our SXL trim, we have heated seats, which for these two outboard passengers, that's pretty awesome. Even an automatic window. And then on the EX trim, you can get this sunshade that you pull up just like that. Still a soft armrest. The same material up here is soft as well. So that's welcome. Got a bottle holder down there. And at five foot nine, I've still got pretty good headroom. And these seats can move forward to give your third row passengers more room, but then I don't have room. You can move them back and then you can even recline the seats, which is pretty awesome. Don't forget about the center folding armrest that is nice and soft right here. And on top of that, we've got our O-blank handles and LED lighting. Let's hop into that third row. Now, the best way to get into that third row is on this passenger side, because then we've got this handle right here. You don't get the same handle over there. So easiest way to get in is to pull that. Once that's pulled, then you can slide the seat forward and it does give you a little bit of an opening right here. Let's see how I fit. Definitely a little tricky for me to get in here. And I moved that seat to where it was about midway through its track and it's not even going back all the way, but so this one is back all the way and I can actually sit here. My knee's gonna rub against it, but there's really not a whole lot of foot room. There's two seats back here. These headrests can fold up and down, which is good. We've even got third row AC vents on certain trims, uh, cup holder, storage bin, so that's nice. And then for headroom, I don't quite fit comfortably, but at five foot nine, I wouldn't want to throw somebody my height back here anyways. Check it out, you even got your AC controls right there. So one thing to note about the Kia Sorento for 2019 is you don't get the two liter turbo anymore but you do get a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, which is just awesome. The two lowest models get you a four cylinder, which will give you up to 29 miles per gallon in the city and a six speed automatic transmission. But our model right here will give us the 3.3 liter direct injected V6 that will give you 290 horsepower, 252 pound feet of torque. That's paired with an eight speed automatic, which is new for 2019. And miles per gallon will be 19 city, 26 highway or 19 city, 24 highway with all wheel drive. And you'll be able to tow anywhere from 3,500 to 5,000 pounds with this engine, 5,000 with all wheel drive. All right, y'all, so for my first impression, my first impression on this Sorento is that it's very easy to just get into and to drive. There's nothing too fancy on it. It's comfortable. Everything is right where you'd expect it to be. Definitely a very well laid out cabin in here. So first impression on acceleration. 
Pedal down. All right. And just as you'd expect with a naturally aspirated V6, you kind of get your power as the RPMs climb. There's no more turbo available in the Sorento, but this 3.3 liter V6 is definitely sufficient for pretty much anybody with a family. Overall ride comfort is also pretty good. The Sorento definitely values ride comfort over handling and you know driving dynamics. The ride comfort is definitely comfortable. I've hit some pretty rough stuff, some big, some big bumps, and I've had no trouble with this vehicle absorbing that. Now obviously this isn't meant to be fast or anything like that, but it's just fun, so. And this engine feels, the engine and transmission sound and feel pretty darn refined. The engine really doesn't make its noise into the cabin unless the RPMs get pretty high, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And more on some of the, the noise, vibration, and harshness, this cabin is pretty quiet. Um, it does, I registered some pretty low decibel ratings. In fact, we have a laminated windshield, we've got laminated front glass on certain trims, so that's always good to see. One cool thing about the Sorento is, I don't know, maybe it's not cool actually, but you can move the shifter into a manual mode. So right now I'm in sixth gear, downshift, fifth gear, fourth gear, third gear, second gear. All right, so it's pretty darn delayed. And really, you probably wouldn't wanna use that unless maybe you wanna do some engine braking going down a hill. The overall feel in the Sorento like I was saying with the ride comfort, it's definitely based more off of comfort. There is definitely a fair amount of body lean at times. I still think that this handles better than the Honda Pilot. Um, the, I've, it's been a while since I've been in the Toyota Highlander and the Chevrolet Traverse, but I have been in those, so please be sure to check those reviews out. Really, this is smaller exterior-wise than the Highlander, but honestly, it feels like it still has a pretty good size or pretty good overall space in here. The Traverse is just, it's just massive. It's pretty big compared to this, and the Pilot is also bigger than this. If you want something that really handles well, an SUV that is meant for driving, or at least the best driving that I've been in for this class, that's the Mazda CX-9. Now, I'm just turning on to the road that I like to get on with some bigger turns, kind of test this vehicle's driving dynamics. As I was saying, the transmission and the engine both feel pretty refined. We do have drive modes. I'm going to put it in uh, sport. Comfort mode does tone it down a little bit, makes it, it does feel maybe a little bit softer, of course. Eco mode um, will definitely help kind of restrict your throttle response. And it comes with a built-in radar detector. Did you guys hear that? Just kidding. That's the lane departure warning, which is actually pretty annoying, but it does work pretty well to keep you in your lane. The lane keeping assist actually works pretty well. The radar cruise can be a little bit jumpy. Not my favorite radar cruise, but at least we have it. And as we start to push it a little bit around this turn, it's actually more composed than I thought it was gonna be. Like I said, there's a little bit of body roll. And the lane keeping assist is actually trying to, I could feel it kind of take the wheel a little bit, but you can definitely be a confident driver in this Kia Sorento. I haven't been able to drive this with a whole bunch of people in it, but with 290 horsepower, you should be just fine. Now for the brakes, they maybe feel a little bit soft, but they get you slowed down pretty well. I've had no trouble with the brakes in real world driving. Um, they feel just fine. Now, kind of like I compared to a few other SUVs, um, one disappointing thing is that the cargo space is actually smaller than pretty much any other three-row SUV, and in fact, it's smaller than a couple two-row SUVs like the CRV, the RAV4, the Volkswagen Tiguan, but overall, you get three rows of seats. The third row is actually more spacious than you think. You just kind of sacrifice the space behind the third row. but. When you look at everything and you see all the features that you can get in here, especially on some of the lower and middle trims like the LX V6, the EX, you can get quite a bit for your money. So a good value from Kia, um, definitely something that you would want to consider if you're in the three row market. It's smaller on the exterior dimensions, but it certainly does not quite feel like that on the inside. So if you want something that's not so big and cumbersome, go for the Kia.
definitely be sure to check out some of my other reviews. I will put them in little annotation things up above, some links down below. I've seen the Toyota Highlander, Mazda CX-9, Honda Pilot, Chevrolet Traverse. Please be sure to check those out. Be sure to subscribe for weekly reviews. I review vehicles every single week. Give this video a big fat thumbs up if you liked it. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of the Kia, what you think of the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.